Uh, hey, sorry, these are, these are my microphones over here. This is really late. I'm like 14,000 weeks overdue with this fourth part. Let's go. We're making a roof. We're making a car. Let's make some other parts of the car. Think about moving along these, like, these side pillar parts. I'm gonna go over some modeling tools and stuff. Um, let's just get started. Personally, uh, we're gonna tab into edit mode. And this is where we left off, something like along these lines. And before we even started, what I kind of want to talk about is topology or edge flow. It's just to go over it real briefly. But right now we have these quadrilaterals, as in shapes that are made up with four vertices. And that is clean topology or clean edge flow. It makes selecting things a lot easier and it looks neat. It's just a good practice to, uh, it's a good habit to develop when 3D modeling. Uh, the reason I mention that is because the section that we're going to work on now, usually uh, I always have a difficult time with it personally and always get some stupid looking um, topology or geometry that doesn't look as neat as what we have currently. But let's get started and do that anyways. So um, one of the tools we went over in the last part was subdivide or loop cut, which was control R. And that just allows us to split up our, our geometry, our faces that we have already created. But another really common, I'm gonna open up this toolbar to the right, left uh, real fast. But another really common tool that we have to uh, create geometry is uh, extrude and that's what we're going to be doing to create these side panels uh, I don't even know what these are called but how do I draw this area we're gonna make that uh, so let's delete that because it was bad drawing I'm gonna select this entire edge I'm just gonna shift alt right click to highlight that and then I'm going to extrude which is E on your keyboard. And I'm just gonna extrude it along the x-axis to around that point. And um, remember we have Z so that we can um, toggle our wireframe to see what we're doing. I'm gonna go to our uh, right side view and just bring it to or somewhere right above this window where these windows start. And not all of these line up perfectly, so I'm just going to use our grab tool to navigate these into position. For our front front pillar thing, uh, I'm going to I kind of want to line this edge up so that it is facing the way we want to extrude it later on. Not going to do it quite yet, but It'll just keep the um, edge flow and topology nice and clean. But the big problem, or what I always have a difficult time, is this back pillar over here. Um, since it, it it goes goes that way pretty sharp, so what I mean is I'm going to take this vertice and move it to where I want it. As you can see, that kind of it doesn't really follow the edge that we're going for here, which means we need some more geometry. I'm going to go ahead and uh, select this, and I'm going to I forget if we talked about this, but we have G to move things however we want. But if we click GG, we can slide, which doesn't disrupt the geometry, but it does sort of move it. Um, into a position closer to what we are going for. So I'm just going to edge slide those. Um, I did have to look up a reference picture to see what this little area is. And this is uh, where reference pictures start to come in handy. Uh, let me just. I, I do want to look at the. No, I want to. Oh. Do I just look at the? I don't want to go to the website. I just want to look at the picture. 
Ah, that's good enough. Um, so we can kind of see that it's a sharp edge along that line. That's where it starts to flatten out and turn into the rear window. Whoop. I'm going to keep that open on my secondary monitor. And what we kind of want to do is replicate that edge. So that's what this is going to that's what this edge is going to serve as. And what we do kind of want is another edge to meet up around to make this. And I'm just going to slide this vertice this edge loop just move that a little bit closer to there to around that point just make sure it lines up along our different views these don't necessarily line up across here some something like that and I'm going to select these three vertices uh, that make up this make up that portion of our our edge and I'm going to click E again to extrude. I'm just going to extrude it um, somewhere along there. And I'm just going to line these up to make that shape. All right, and I'm going to go to our top view and just line these up more better. I kind of want this one to go here. kind of want this one to go somewhere, somewhere there. And... Perhaps something like that. Since, uh, let me figure out how I want to explain this. Uh, so since this is, starts to flatten out, we do kind of want these edges, this edge and this edge to be fairly close, um, especially here. Uh, let me, this is what I mean. This is always kind of a difficult area for to work with, um, but we're going to do something like that probably. See how these are a lot closer than say this one and this one? That means it will be a sharper edge. Um, it's a sharper edge. And for the top, uh, it does, I guess it kind of smooths out a little bit. We can we'll keep it like that for now and just see what we can, what kind of results we get with it later on. Um, um, actually, it wasn't so it wasn't too bad. Uh, I am going to add an edge loop across this area, um, just to add some more geometry. Uh, maybe move it out a little bit, something like that. Just double check our our views, bring it up a little bit, something like that. Looks pretty good, I think. Probably, maybe a little bit. Gonna enable smooth shading. Did we talk about that? I can't. This is the thing about taking so long. Not only is it inconsistent and annoying, but I also forget what we talked about in the last section. So I'm gonna open up our toolbar, enable smooth shading, and just see how it looks. I think it looks pretty good. I like to keep it on flat shading um, while doing doing this modeling just so I can see the different faces and stuff within our model. If we go to our front view, you can see that uh, this, this curve curvature for the roof line is a lot more round and curved than the one we currently have. So I'm going to get, mm, how do I erase this? Don't use that very often. Uh, we are going to add a loop cut across this entire thing, just uh, double left click to confirm, and then just sort of move it, the entire thing up until it's more rounded, something like that. And we probably will have to, yeah, uh, I will edge slide these vertices. Oh, yeah, so since we can edge slide entire edges, we can also just edge slide vertices, which like as I mentioned, doesn't not allow you to move it wherever you want, but does uh, does so in a, a manner that doesn't disrupt the geometry. 
I'm just going to sort of move these into position across our different views. You know, something like that. Yeah, that looks good to me. Uh, let me just check our rear view. Remember, that's control one. And that looks pretty good. That was actually the hard part. I thought it would be much more difficult than that. But uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, now this front pillar is a much more simpler, in my opinion. Um, so what we're going to do is just uh, select this edge loop. Actually, we're going to select. Let's move these into place a little bit more. Well, we do two or three. I think we should do two. No, we'll do three. Uh, we're going to select these three vertices and just extrude them from the top view around to where this line, this line right here. And then line it up according to the right side view. And so uh, just sort of move them into place using our grab tool. that um, all right something like that and uh, obviously we need to add some more shape to that because it doesn't look too too great uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, an edge loop up here just to sort of narrow these in a little bit perhaps something like that This is why I was debating whether to do two or three vertices, because if we just did these two, it would have been a little bit narrow. Um, but if we do three, we sort of have to add this crazy, crazy loop cut to narrow it down a bit. Um, but you know, if we look at smooth shading, it, it looks. We might have to neaten it up later. Uh, Might have to neaten it up a little bit later when we're doing some detailing work, but I think that'll be just fine for now. Um, I am just going to add a couple of loop cuts throughout this pillar, um, but first things first, I'm going to select these three vertices that make up the bottom of the pillar, and uh, I'm going to straighten them out. Uh, and a quick way to do this is scaling. So if we click S on our keyboard uh, to scale, we do this. And then if you select an axis to scale upon, it'll scale just on that axis. So if I do Y, it'll only scale on that axis. If I do X, it'll only scale on that axis. And if we click Z, it'll only scale on that axis. And while you're selecting this, you can type in a specific value amount. And if we're scaling along the Z axis and you click zero, that'll basically just center them um, align them, straighten them out along that axis or Z axis. So now that that's uh, straight, I'm just going to add a couple of loop cuts, maybe three. Remember, we can just scroll on our mouse wheel to increase that amount, and then just double left click to confirm that. And then I'm just going to select these edge loops and sort of move them into place from our right side view. And then just double check with our top side view. Shift Alt right click. Shift Alt right click. Maybe we could even bring this in. Bring these in a little bit.
Yeah, I think that looks pretty uh, pretty good uh, so far. I'm satisfied with the result. Um, basically, what I was doing, I'm being kind of picky. Uh, I'm just sort of... Right now, we have... Going back to what I was saying originally at the beginning about uh, edge flow and topology, these are really neat and clean quadrilaterals, faces, squares, whatever you want to call them. They're neat uh, and pretty evenly size throughout. I mean, obviously this one's a little bit bigger, but they're neat and even quadrilaterals. And if we take a look at, you know, what we have going on with this more complex geometry, uh, we got this this stretched out one, um, more of a trapezoid, I guess you would call it. Uh, and we kind of want to limit that as much as we can. So sometimes what we can do is obviously we have moved this these vertices and our, our geometry into place according to the shape that we want to get but we also want to keep in mind the not only the general shape of the whatever we're modeling but also the shape of our our geometry within it try to trying our best to keep it neat and easy to work with um, It'll make steps later on in the process, such as um, doing our high poly model and um, texturing as well. If your geometry is neat, it makes it a lot easier to work with. So, uh, yeah, that, that it was a little bit more complex than the roof, uh, and it only gets more complicated from from here. So. Thanks for watching. Uh, my goal is to. I gotta get back on track and sort of catch up since we've fallen behind. Um, but yeah, hopefully you learned something interesting and useful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the uh, comments below and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much for watching and uh, see you in the laters.